All right. Welcome everyone. So it's nine o'clock p.m. here in Italy. I already thank you for joining. And I imagine that all of you know why you're here. So we are going through the Shimmer Beta Node installation party. This is to see how easy it is to set up a Shimmer node, uh, which is actually the same as setting up a uh, Hornet node. So can't be easier than that. Uh, remember to um, get go to the Get Your Badges channel to receive or to get your Shimmer Hornet Discord role by clicking on the sparkles so that you can be updated in case of or be pinged in case of updates or anything. Uh, for today, um, we will use the general voice chat. So um, remember to mute yourself and to use the chat on the right hand side. There is an icon. Let me see if I can see it here where I am at, which is on the top right, which says show chat. Um, the, that channel would be the best to communicate with me. But of course, um, you can also use general. But in that case, please make sure to ping me because I would not see it otherwise. In the meantime, thank you very much for being here. Um, as you can see, Cordyside is coming closer and closer and my beard is being trimmed and trimmed with every Go Shimmer version. But now I will let it grow again until Cordyside will be at least on Shimmer. So still expecting those great beard decide. Now, jokes aside, again, thanks everyone for joining. Uh, right now we are around more or less 20, 22 people. And let's cut it short. Uh, anyone else not seeing my my cam or my stream? Just before I start or I continue. Thank you for replying. Let me see. Both are working. All good. Just a little dark. Yes. Yeah, sorry. It's. It's raining outside and I'm not really an, uh, a video influencer, so I did not really set up uh, good lights, but I will do it for the next time. So thank you very much for confirming. Let's get started. Let's get to the most important things. So um, I'll have a little presentation which will be shared uh, with you, of course, later. Um, there is also some installation steps that I will share with you in the chat uh, right when we start. Um, Shimmer Beta Hornet. So what are we going to do today? Uh, first of all, uh, you are already here with me in general. And again, there is the, the, the general voice chat on the top right if you want to ask questions or um, get in touch with me uh, if necessary. Right now, uh, again, this video is not sponsored. This this event is not sponsored in any way. Um, I'm just using this provider, which I'm not going to say the name of, because um, I can, uh, let's say, create a VPS and, and kill it right um, after without paying a whole month. But um, also for decentralization, uh, we suggest to either use a bare bone computer. So if you have it in your office or somewhere in your business where you're using uh, real PCs or virtual machines on your bare bone systems, um, bare bone systems. Oh, I see the stream is full already. Oh, is it limited? I put it to unlimited if I remember it correctly. Let me see, let me see. No, no, please don't be sad. Bitrate user limit is unlimited. Let me see why you can't see it. Um, can anyone restream eventually what they see? I know that sometimes people do that. 
otherwise oh let me see what is this why right what is going on here maybe if Shin Ryu can disable his uh, camera it should be possible to let me see because usually the limit is when you have cameras on but I have no camera on so it should work otherwise hey. hello uh, yeah hey Dave all right can is someone else restreaming it you're in good so, all right so just let just remember not to connect your cameras or anything and it should work and please remember to mute your mic good so um again i was saying this is not a sponsored event so um what i'm going to show is of course my personal profile my personal system but you can use your own vps on the provider that you prefer again i'm not naming any names uh, i'm going to do it on this one because i already have an account and as i said before i can let it run for 10 minutes and then kill the machine uh, without paying that much or without paying a whole month um, let's not forget uh, for my setup i will use as an ssh private and public key pair which is preferred in my opinion and that the security we're going through today is really minimal so it's it's not even the bare minimum so if you're going to set up your node you have to remember that you're responsible for everything that happens with your machine also by legal bindings by contracts what not so always make sure to harden your system and um, make sure to learn about security afterwards uh, it's not part of this event today um, to our agenda um, to our agenda today agenda so, today. so we, are we are going through, through. Oh, i hear some e echo echo It's not, it's me. not me. All right. All right. Let me find you. I will find you. I will find you. I'm just muting everyone that's, muting not everyone that's not muted. Maybe it's even myself. It's even myself. Um, 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 all right. So, right, so really quick on the agenda. Really on the agenda we're going to look going at, to some at some alternatives. alternatives. So you are not forced are to, not set, up forced your own to set up your own node. But of course, but it's of what course, I prefer to do I because I love to be, in, love control to be in control of my, of my own system, own as, much system as, possible. as much as possible. And, and then we are going to really quickly go through, really an quickly go through an installation so that you see how so you see fast, how is, it fast it can be. It can be. And after that, and I'm after going that, to go I'm through the whole through educational the section where section I'm going to talk about Hornet, Hornet uh, install tools, uh, install uh, generating uh, SSH, SSH keys, keys and, so on and, so and so on and so forth. So here are the so installation are notes. The I'm going to share them now, share them now in, the chat, in the chat, which is here. Which is here. All right. So you can here really can follow here really step follow by step, step, by step all, the installation. all the installation. All right, this is not getting curious, not getting but curious, but interesting. interesting. Um, um, let's get started. Let's get started. Shimmer, node services. Shimmer node services. So if you're a so if business, you're if, you're business if you're interested in interested having, someone having someone managing your nodes and, and uh, you do not want to, not want to or you do not have time to take care of that yourself, well, uh, there is uh, there one is really long standing really community, community project, project called project Tangle Bay. Which is operating which is APIs operating and nodes API now and since 2018. So, 2018, so um, you uh, can make can uh, be sure that be sure there is that experience, there is experience from his side from in managing side nodes and setting nodes them up and, 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 and um, managing. Managing. 
Uh, I hear XCV that there's a big echo, but I do not understand where it's coming from. Is it me? Oh, it's not me. So who is it? Who are you? Is it, okay, Mika can confirm. I hear myself, even my voice. So it's really... Yeah, yeah. No one else, no one looks, else looks like they're... Like they're mic's on so i don't know what don't know do you hear you echo hear when echo i'm talking when I'm talking yeah i'm hearing echo when you're talking no echo for the others okay so it's for some of us yeah it's always a challenge with this audio video stuff really make sure, interesting make sure your um audio and mic are on the same thing sometimes if they're on different uh different things then it can't do the the noise cancellation or the the echo cancellation discord can't all right let's see it worked until before let me see here input is my mic let me set it up manually okay this is the surround and output device is default all right let me see is anybody else having coming back through the stream in addition mm -hmm. uh, yeah just yeah, so you know so antonio i don't hear, hear any, any echo, echo when, when you're talking, talking so. so all right and let's just go on and uh, let's discover later how to fix this but i think we'll do we'll make the best out of it for today so tangle bay again um beside his swarm script which is a really easy way to install and manage iota nodes he's also supporting the i see an ass iota community node sponsorship so users can actually um pay let's say for the server and he will take care of the rest i know that this service might be um, how is it called might be end of life soon so let's uh, wait for to, to confirm down the, down the down the way if he's going to continue this kind of service or not um just for your information i'm not using windows so i have no playback so it's really strange because it started a little later down the presentation but let's go on so to visit tangle bay and uh, look at his services it's uh, the website is tanglebay.com after that we have um high road which is a touch point project and what they do, they provide infrastructure as a service for the IOTA ecosystem. They are an innovation platform that will help you get started with fast cloud-based prototyping. So they really take care about everything. And this is really a neat way of being supported, in my opinion. And of course, their experts deliver custom enterprise solutions. So depending on what you're looking for and what your debt is going to be uh, or your requirements uh, you can get in touch with the high road team uh, the website here is hiveroad.io all right quick start and cornet installation on ubuntu 22.04 let's see how that goes and how quickly we can get there uh really quick Disclaimer, before I start, um, we as IOTA Foundation, so on this Discord, we officially only support the manual installations, which is what I'm going to right now. Um, on the other hand, I uh, extrapolated the, uh, the steps that we're going through from the dft.green installer script, which is available also on GitHub, so that you can uh, see what the script does and as always it's open source so you can personalize it fork it and do whatever you prefer on the other hand if you're going to use the dlt.green um, installation script 
their team and their community are available for support. So this is the difficulty for us as a youth foundation. Um, we had different ecosystem partners, members that took care of building different installation scripts. I mean, I think I made one myself back in the day with Irie, with uh, the, the Java version of, of um, the IOTA node. And it's really hard to support because people come in, my node doesn't work, and it's really hard sometimes to troubleshoot it. So with the IOTA Foundation, we want to focus on people that set up their nodes manually, like I'm going to do right now and I'm going to show here. On the other hand, there are other ways out there and um, explore them if you're interested. But of course, also take uh, the opportunity to get in touch with those teams to understand how to get support and uh, fix eventual issues or errors. All right, let me see if I can do this here as I want to show you. So I'm going now to follow the installation note that I have here. They have been shared in the in the channel, so you can really follow step by step what I'm going to do here. I already generated my SSH keys, so I'm not going to show that. I'm going to set up a VPS on the provider, get the information that I need, then really start the installation right away, so that we can almost time the installation from scratch. If you're going to use this provider for your tests or for the things that um, you're looking for, please make sure to choose Ubuntu 22.04. This is what we are going to use for this uh, educational initiative. So let's create a machine. Let's see how long that takes. In the meantime, let me get my terminal here uh, and transition to the screen so that it is formatted a little better and I can also work with both. So the first thing I will need is my IP address. So this IP address, following also my guide, I'm going to put them in this Google Ad toolbox here to get the domain name that I will need later down the, down the line. So here, click on the PR so that you will get here your static host name. This is needed later for the node. So let's also copy this into a paste bin here so that I do not lose it afterwards. Well, I didn't copy it probably. But here, let's make sure that it works. All right, and so I removed the dot at the end. Let's not, for, let's not forget that. All right. Let's go back to my IP address and let me straight away SSH into the machine. As you can see, I tried several times how to do that. Let me accept the fingerprint. And the first thing I will have to do is to upgrade the machine. So really step by step, take this block here about updating and upgrading the machine. Let him do his magic. Let's wait a little bit. With the command, as you can see, there is a dash Y at the end, which means that it's automatically um, confirming with yes at every question. So it's going through the whole installation without even asking anything. All right. So did someone take this script? It's all right. For me, it's 19 pass. Let's see how long it will take to install. All right, let's just leave the standard options here. All right, new kernel. Boom, 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 boom. At least it's a quick update. That's a good thing. Okay, okay. Just, just let's restart everything and also reboot. The VPS so that we are sure that once it restarts the updated kernel 
is working. It should run also on Ubuntu 20.04. Um, I just tested it on 22.04, so I can guarantee that it works with that. But try it out. It should not be that hard to make it run also on 20.04. I know that the script was tested on 22.04 too. So, all right, let's get back into the machine. As you can see, I don't have to set a password or anything because I'm using my SSH keys. Um, Crypto Beast, I've heard of some X team members and community members using Windows. I never did myself. I'm a Linux freak and I prefer Windows all, uh, Linux all the way. But I heard that some people tried it. So. Once you have all the config configuration files, it should run as an ex uh, executable. But I see already CV confirming that it runs on Ubuntu 2.2004, and Dr. Electron mm -hmm. is confirming that it will use Docker anyway. Exactly, with Shimmer with 100% uh, Docker installation. So once you have Docker running, it works. Uh, right now, I, uh, I installed the dependencies for Docker. Now I'm going to add the key ring and the necessary information to install Docker on Linux. As you can see, it's not really, I mean, it's really nice that you can just copy paste, but at a certain point down the installation, make sure to, um, to read what you're doing. It's not enough to copy paste because you have to be careful of what you're doing here. So now I'm going to put the repo at the repository, do an update of the packages. Come on. All right. I can type this oh, update and then we're going to install Docker and all the packages here. Again, it's going to do everything automatically because I have a dash Y at the end so that it does not ask questions. What we're doing right now, we're installing Docker, which is a container system. What does it mean? It means that you get a prepackaged um, application, which in this case is uh, Hornet with all dependencies, all the libraries, everything that you need. Uh, this removes the uh, what is usual, what is sometimes called, yeah, it's, it runs on my machine thing um, because you are actually um, served with the whole libraries, everything that is tailored to the application. So it's not only interesting for Shimmer, but it's interesting for many other applications out there. Um, right now, okay, we are going to verify actually the latest pre-release because uh, what I have here is the alpha 23. So this is why I, ha I said before, be always uh, careful and to read what the uh, what instructions say. And let's see what's the latest version. The latest version is Hornet 2.0.0 beta 3. So it's important for me to get here the latest link. Since I'm doing it with Docker, I'm right clicking this one and getting the link to the Hornet 2.0.0 dash beta three docker link, which is what I need. So this is what I'm going to get. Um, I create now the folders under opt because this is where I like to put it. I switch to the directory, which is shimmer beta, opt shimmer beta. And I'm going to get the data from the repository. So wget dash C O of course, uh, not with a mouse click, but with uh, copy paste. And here is the beta three Docker um, archive. Now let's extract it. And then we remove the contain uh, the um, archive itself. And now if we look here, we already have a lot, uh, all the, the packages or let's say all the information that we need. Before we continue, 
I'm going to just pull the containers. What does it mean? It does not start anything. It just gets all the containers that it will need from the so-called registry. So um, it's going to get the Hornet container, traffic container, Prometheus, everything, but start nothing. It's just to have the containers on my machine right now because I will execute further commands to, um, to continue with my installation. All right, the next thing we need and which is necessary is to create an env file. So this .env file, I will highlight this a little better, is a file that contains information like my hostname, my email address, uh, dashboard username, password and salt. This env file is mandatory before you continue doing anything else. So before we write, we start with writing the end file, we're going to get the dashboard password and salt. This is necessary to actually being able to connect to the dashboard later. So since we uh, already pulled the, the containers from the registry, I have now my Hornet uh, container on my machine and I will now change here the password. So remember to change it to my uh, to your own preferred password not to play for me today and i will receive here a password hash which we will need in the end file and the password salt i'm just copying them to my paste bin so that i have them later really dirty i just need it here for uh for later so here it is hash here the salt i'm just also taking note of the password before i forget it so it's not to play and we go back to the installation instructions so we now write a new end file you can either write a new end file with this um, with this parameters in here or you can input them with echo every time so let's clear the screen and now for me it's nano.env and I'll copy here this um, template and I ins uh, start inputting my information. So for th first thing is my email address. This is not my real email address here. I just need it for for um, for this example. Next thing, I'm going here to get my static hostname. So this I got, if you remember, by inputting my IP address into the Google Admin Toolbox, dig, selecting PTR, pressing enter, and getting my, uh, my hostname. Of course, um, if you're doing a uh, a more or less production installation, you would input here something like node.nerd.tech. Uh, but right now for this example and for this uh, educational session, we're going to use, uh, not this one, but the, stat, uh, the domain name that we got from the dig tool, which is this one. Okay. Let's see if it pastes correctly. Perfect. For the username, I'm going to choose a username, which is going to be Wargames. The hash is going to be put here in the password field. Ah, come on. My keyboard is not really friendly today. Does not like my copy commands. Here where it says dashboard password, we're not going to input the password in plain text. So it's not, not to play, but it is this hash that we created beforehand. And now also the salt, which goes here. And now we save the .env file. Okay, let's see. Now we have a .env file. After that, we prepare the folders for Docker, which is also here already being um, pre-shared by the Hornet team. And now to verify, I now have the data from before with the config information i have my .env file that i just wrote and our data uh, directory with uh, the correct um, permissions and i'm just going to verify the config.json if auto peering is enabled and auto peering is enabled so that's good after that we start the hornet node docker compose up dash d Dash D means as demons, which means that it will start and just exit. So 
that I don't have to uh, see everything on screen and I can I could close this window if I wish to. Uh, now you say, okay, but there is nothing happening. That's true. That's why we are going to use uh, Docker PS to see the containers starting. They were created 19 seconds ago and now are up 15 seconds. Let's give them half a minute. So we're now 11 minutes in because I'm talking a lot. Um, and what I can do now while we wait, let's give them at least a minute. Let's see if, if a minute is enough. I can again take my domain name here and put it in the browser. Okay, 40 seconds, let's see, 54 seconds. Let me check the log file, come on. Docker logs, and I'm getting here from the IOTA Ledger Hornet this string of numbers in the beginning, which is uniquely uh, identifying my container. And I can now look what's happening in here, and I see that Hornet is already up. So let's try my luck. And my Hornet. I believe you can just put Hornet as well, you don't have to put the container. All right, thanks. Thanks. I prefer with the container ID. But that's me. <laughs> and I can log in with my Wargames username and not to play. Oh, come on. Wargames, as I said, not to play. Password. Boom. Let me not save this. Horny node is running. It's healthy. It's in sync and is already sharing and out appearing. Done. What was it? 12 minutes. Okay, 12 minutes because Antonio is slow. Okay, but you see, in 12 minutes you can set up a node uh, by copy pasting the commands and taking your time to read a little bit and to fumble around with the installation. That's it. So this is how you install a Hornet node. Um, of course, from here you would uh, add a dashboard to Grafana, you would look into the firewall uh, set up the firewall, set up the correct ports. Uh, be careful with the firewall to allow SSH, otherwise you might lock yourself out. Uh, create a new user, uh, because you should not log in with root, if possible, over SSH or at all. And install other uh, things like fail to ban, uh, unattended upgrades, changing your SSH port, uh, and so on and so forth. Um, we're not going into this, so there are other links and there are so many resources out there to learn about VPS security. So this was a really quick start and now we're going through the rest of, um, of the installation party. So as you see, 12 minutes to set up your node. Well, let's. I would really love to see how quick some members can be and I'm sure that by using the DLT green script you can be even faster if you have all information at hand. If you do not like to bother with any of this you can of course um, get in touch with either Tangle Bay or Hive Road to set up your infrastructure with them depending on your needs of course. So um, let's go back to the educational part of this initiative because the practical part, um, I just love to show it right away how it works because um, all what comes now is really about education and learning more about what we're doing here because um, sometimes people really want quick satisfaction. Okay, this is how it's done. All right, now I know what's, what's happening, what I have to do. And now you can relax and just stay with me and uh, figure out what Shimmer and Hornet is all about. So Hornet, Hornet is our um, IOTA node software and also Shimmer node software, which is written in Golang. It started as a community project back in the day. I remember uh, the launch in 2019 in Berlin. I think it was 2019. Now with all this um, time passing, I, I just lost track of when things happened. And it gives you full capabilities um, of a, uh, let's say, an access to the Tangle. So once you have your own Hornet node, you have uh, complete control over what's happening over your infrastructure and over your gateway to the Tangle. Um, 
the good thing about Hornet it, it is that it is lightweight, so it really does not need that much memory. Um, it is really quick, it is really well written, and it is a base for Chrysalis and now for Shimmer. So um, the team which is um, working on, um, on Hornet, which is Muxer, Alex, and IoT mod, I'm sorry, I just know some of you really just by your nicknames, um, is the basic component in the architecture to get access to the Tango. So once you have a node, you can connect your, li uh, your libraries, your tools, your everything you do uh, to the Tango using your node. Uh, the advantage of running your node, uh, as you know, there are no fees, so there is no monetary incentives. But on the other hand, it's like uh, having your own router. So if you use a public node, it's more or less like going to McDonald's and connecting to the public Wi-Fi. And therefore, the bandwidth that you get, the opening hours and the access to the system, and the, uh, it all depends on the person and on the, mm, on the team making that resource available publicly. On the other hand, if you control your own infrastructure, you know what your sets, uh, you know the settings, you know what and how and why everything you do. And therefore it's uh, for people like me, which uh, love to be a little more in control of, of the infrastructure that they use, a really uh, good point forward. And another thing which is new or which is now being really extended is this INX plugin system, which is um, a system to build uh, microservices based on the Tangle. For example, uh, some of you might know that we had the so-called Chronicle node, which is what we call the Perma node, which is the solution to keep track of the, all the history of the Tangle. Well, with starting with Shimmer, uh, Chronicle is going to be a uh, I INX plugin. So you can turn it on and turn it off without installing a uh, additional uh, node or additional infrastructure. And this is pretty powerful. I know that Dave is with us. Dave is a Shimmer X team member. And I, I can say that he built the first custom INX plugin. I don't know if there's an NDA, Dave, would you like to tell us what you did with your INX or maybe not? <laughs> yeah, I can describe it a little bit. Um, essentially, it's it's very much like Chronicle. So essentially, uh, INX allows you to do something similar before, you, you know, you would listen to MQTT events and you would do something based on that. INX allows you a lot closer integration using GPRC to the Hornet node and then allows you to uh, to take information directly off those events and work in whatever language you want to. I chose Go, but you could write in whatever uh, other language that you want and then essentially communicate with the Hornet node. Um, what we end up doing is taking a lot of the Tangle information and replicating it, replicating it to the Sooniverse environment so that we're aware exactly what's going on and can react to things. Thank you very much. So uh, Dr. Electron is already sharing the link to GRPC so that uh, you might find more information about what it is and how it works. Thanks again, Dave. So um, what are IOTA node extensions, INX uh, plugins existing right now? So the Chronicle, um, the coordinator, so you can set up your own private tangle with a coordinator using an INX uh, plugin. The faucet to distribute tokens on your private tangle. The indexer, the MQTT um, interface and the participation plugin, which is what is being used right now, for example, to communicate uh, staking and to do voting. And you can write your own, of course, using gRPC, depending on uh, what your needs are. Another really interesting thing um, is that Hornet is being shipped now with uh, the open source Traffic Proxy. Uh, Traffic is an independent project, it's open source. Right now it uh, is used as such that you can access the API and the dashboard um, 
using SSL certificates, uh, using Let's Encrypt, so open, free uh, SSL certificates. And um, I s use, for example, traffic for all my uh, Docker Swarm uh, clusters to serve my services. So for example, at home, I have uh, my own uh, next cloud installation so that I can share uh, files between my devices and I'm using traffic to secure that. Um, so if you are uh, looking for a way uh, to replace your HA proxy or Nginx or anything that you are using to expose your services, I suggest to give a look at least uh, at Traffic Labs because if a community manager can set it up, I'm sure that you can set it up also. And for Hornet, it is really important because it secures the access to the dashboard and other uh, services. And it is, um, again, um, basic, uh, let's say the setup is basic and you can, of course, harden also your traffic proxy uh, setup. Uh, Dr. Electron, what is the poll INX? Can you tell us more? We have two minutes, a sec, uh, half a minute, or is it NDA? He's typing for people looking. He's typing. Sorry, can't talk. Or all, all fine, all good, all good. We'll we'll discover it soon. So uh, what I'm going through now is, um, as I said before, I'm connected to my machine using SSH keys. Uh, what does that mean? It means that instead of typing my password and sending my password around, um, like with crypto where you have a private key and a public key, it works really much the same where the server verifies your public key with a private key and gives you access to the system without asking for a password. Oh, some kind of proof of inclusion. Ah, it's a POI, not a poll. It's a POI, proof of inclusion, INX. Now I got it. Um, so I'm going through really quickly, okay, for Windows, how to set it up. Uh, as I said in the beginning, the presentation will be shared, so it's really step by step. And we're going to use Putty and Puttygen. So Putty is a software which is widely used uh, in Windows uh, environments. I know that uh, PUT is also available in Linux. Uh, I didn't know that before because I usually use the terminal, but it's a software to just connect to uh, different um, uh, different um, as VPS servers and whatnot. So here on the website, I'm just really going through quickly, okay, let's not do this step by step. But what you can do is go to the Putty website, download Putty, but also look for Puttygen, which is here on the bottom, which is what we're going to use um, to generate our key. Uh, we're going to click on generate. It will require us to move the mouse here over this area and it will generate a key. Um, I forgot to tell you in the beginning, but we will generate an ED24519 key. Uh, so remember to click that before you do it. And here you have the public key that you will uh, paste on your server and or in your service provider, it can ask you that. You can also save then the uh, private key se uh, secured by a password. So if someone gets access to your private key, they could still, um, they could would still need the password to um, to unlock it and then you save the private key also here on the bottom so that you have it on your system so this is the private key saved and secured by your uh, password next thing in macOS and GNU Linux so here I have my terminal which can also be uh, in macOS there is this command also here we are going to generate an ed24519 key in the .ssh id ed24519 file with my email address here at the end. Um, if I remember correctly, this means that it's going to go through 100 rounds generating it. And also here I will, of course, secure it with the password. And again, here is also my uh, private key, which is the one without pub and the one with pub is the public key. Remember to only and every time only and exclusively share the public key. So the private key is like your 
uh, IOTA mnemonics like your 24 words. You should never share the private key and only share the public key. And here they are. Uh, this is my public key, which I then put into my service provider system where they then recognized my account right away. Another thing that many people might not know, if you're an owner of a Ledger Nano device, it can be an S, an X, an S+, Plus, whatever Nano device you, you prefer, you can use that to actually secure your, um, your servers. So there is an application um, which you can find under the developer settings of your Ledger Live and it makes it possible to authenticate. So your private key, like your private key for your uh, wallets, is never exposed to the machine. And this is what I really like to do. As always, the links are available in the HackMD uh, document that I shared in the beginning, um, in the beginning of uh, the uh, of the initiative of this uh, event and will be of course also be available in the YouTube video once I share that. Um, Dave and Dr. Electron are working on a new Grafana dashboard which can be seen a screenshot of in the uh, general voice chat. Let me see if I can share it without breaking. No, it will. Let me see if it, if it will break my uh, presentation. Maybe I can share it here really quickly so that you see this is a preview of the new Grafana dashboard, which keeps track of the health and a lot of other information of your Hornet node. There are so many things you can do. It's impossible. It's incredible. Uh, figuratum. My pleasure. Yeah, Ledger um, devices are really nice devices. You can use them also as two-factor authentication with uh, Fido services like, for example, Google accounts, GitHub accounts. Uh, so I'm just typing Fido authentication again in the chat. So have a look at their official documentation because the devices are really great for uh, security in general. I will. Thank you. My pleasure. So um, here I'm going through the um, setup of the VPS on the provider that we talked about before. So you might not have seen it, but I created a project. I added a server. I chose a location and make sure if you're using the same provider to choose here in the dropdown Ubuntu 22.04. As CV uh, told us and um, made us aware, it also works on 20.04. Um, just try, um, if you're setting up a new machine, let's use the latest version of an operating system because long-term support uh, is extended uh, for, for some time. So this is the 22, so it's the 22, uh, the April version of uh, 2022. And 18.04 means it's the April version of uh, 2018. So as long as the systems are stable, um, use them and try to keep them up to date. And of course, as always, um, security and updates are really, really, really important. I used um, choose your VPS based on your budgets, of course. So uh, it is really enough right now and still to choose this machine that I have here, which is uh, the one which costs would cost me five euros and thirty seven a month. Um, what we suggest is always at least uh, forty gigabytes of data. Let us remember that Hornet does automatically snapshots, which means it prunes all the information that it does not need and just keeps the ledger state. So this is a good start to just, you know, get used to it. And as you can see, this costs like nine cents an hour. So you can play with it a few days if you want to, um, or even a month. I mean, five euros um, should be feasible um, for some time or at least for a month to uh, figure out how it works. Of course, you can also install Hornet on your machine at home but that would mean to take care of your uh, router fi uh, ports, uh, forwardings, and a lot of, of different settings 
that require a little more education in the sense of that you um, have to learn how that works uh, while using a VPS for a few hours, um, which might cost 20 cents. Uh, and try these things out um, might make things a little easier at least on the start and for the developers listening in um, unless you have requirements which are uh, you're putting uh, some data which has to remain in your country for certain reasons uh, remember that you can use actually public nodes um, if it's the devnet the developer network uh, public beta network or the mainnet to develop so the cool thing is that you do not really need to set up a node to start developing. You can actually uh, use public uh, endpoints to start developing code and, and, um, and do your thing. Of course, if you want more control over, over the infrastructure, this is where setting up your own node is required. Or if you're in a situation where you're like, uh, for example, in a university, where uh, you get does you do not get out of the uh, of the network for some kind of reasons, um, you can set up a private tangle, so a private system uh, with all the components. But otherwise, it's really really um, easy to just use open endpoints out there. So what I did here, for example, um, continuing my node setup with this provider, I added my SSH key, so the public key, so that uh, it will would not require my password every time I, want, I log in into machine. And here you can see that the SSH key is uh, taken care of. And then you start your machine. You take note of the IP address, which I did before, for two reasons. One is to use it over uh, PuTTY or terminal to connect to your machine. And the other is to get uh, your uh, hostname over uh, the dig tool. Uh, of course, using this kind of hostname is not the preferred mod method, is not the production method. Um, if you are setting up a node for good, uh, it, I might suggest here to purchase your own domain and to set it up as such that you can access your node from your own domain. All right, how would I connect using PuTTY? I would insert here my IP address I took note of. The port usually standard is 22. Um, I would go under the uh, connection SSH auth field and load my private key here using the browse field and selecting my private key this time. And then going back to the sessions, give it a name, save it so that I would have it here every time that I need it. So I could afterwards click on this and on load and have all the settings set up already. Connect to the machine for the first time and accept the fingerprint if you trust the machine, if you're sure that it's the one that you're looking for. Logging as root, using the passphrase the first time to unlock or uh, to unlock the, uh, the key. And here we are. And here we would be logged in and start and continue with our installation um oh i see now i could actually switch way much no it, it looks good okay uh how would i do the same thing with uh new linux or mac os ssh space root at ip address as i did before uh confirm with the s the fingerprint unlock my key uh, here in my system, it would give me a pop-up to insert my password. You might not have seen that during my setup because I checked here to automatically unlock it when I log in, so to save some time. And then I would be logged in and I could continue my installation. Um, there is also with that provider the opportunity to set up a password if you really do not have the time to set up an SSH key. I discourage from doing that. Um, I always encourage to use a public uh, private key combination authentication, but sometimes, you know, there is a need for a password. So you can also set up a password. Uh, remember to, if you're using a password to change your password right away. So here uh, I would go through the whole installation again. So this is where I have again the link to the HackMD file with the step-by-step -step, 
um, uh, with the step-by-step -step installation, yes, please use SSH and please use uh, public and private keys, uh, definitely. So anyone here wants to see it again, slowly, how the installation goes? I'd say yes, come on, let's do that. Why not? I mean, we're here to enjoy the evening together and I will take a little more time this time to set it up and to do it. So let me just delete this one and just kill it. I'm, I'm just too, too lazy, you know, to reset it. So I'm just going to delete it. So even if you're going to use the same provider, remember once you're done, so if you do not really want to let the node run, because you just wanted to try it out, delete uh, the server and you're not going to pay anything else anymore. So also here I will have to oh, kill mm -hmm. that one because it killed my try. Yes, are there questions or anything in the chat? I heard something, no, probably not. I see, yes, setting up SSH and keys is not that difficult. All right, so as before, I'm in my project. This time let's go to Finland, just set it up a machine here. Oh, this is expensive Finland. Oh, uh, oh yeah, this is the CPX, okay, CX. Okay, it's the same price. Ubuntu 2204. Uh, let's scroll down here. Uh, one note, eventually, there is with this provider the opportunity to have a standard machine or a dedicated machine. Um, if you really have high performance requirements, then a dedicated machine is good, but also look at the price. So for our experiments right here, for us playing around a little bit, uh, this machine is good enough. But again, if you're looking for higher performance, uh, it all depends on the budget that you have available. And as you might see also here, the SSH key is already uh, inserted automatically because this is my account and this is where I set it up already. All right, let's create a machine. Um, it will, sometimes it gives me the same IP address, but now probably this is a new one. Let me again go into this tool and get my host name. As you can see, usually it's the IP address reversed but again this is how they do it always check with your provider and your ip address and this is going here uh, all right and remove the dot at the end because otherwise i might have issues later on all right then what do we do now now i think we can already log in again i'm going through the same steps uh from the beginning with all of the patience of the time and maybe I'm going to explain a little bit more what we're doing. So now I'm going to take again the IP address, going to my terminal, giving him the commands SSH to connect over secure shell, which is uh, what this is called, accepting the fingerprint of the machine so that every time a machine changes, every time someone might, let's say, try to expose uh, a malicious machine using the same IP address. Um, in that case, it will warn you that you already had um, the key of the machine and uh, you should be careful because something has changed. So always uh, be careful when you do these things. Let me accept again the, um, the, key, uh, the fingerprint. And now let me, again, step by step, what we're going to do first. First, we're going to do um, an update and an upgrade of the packages that we have, that the machine has. So, apt-get update and apt-get upgrade. Probably I could do up apt update and apt upgrade, but yeah. What is different now to what? Um, K. Mueller, I am doing exactly the same thing. I'm just doing it slowly and I'm explaining a little bit more what we're doing. Because before it was really a quick run. Ah, I'm just copy pasting, copy pasting, copy pasting. But um, that's good to show really quickly what I'm doing. But I'm now, um, since this is an educational um, 
event, I'm explaining a little bit more what we're doing right here so that um, there is more context around the commands that you type. It is uh, discouraged, you know, to go on a website and just copy paste thing without uh, understanding what you're doing because you never know who's the author. You never know if there is something um, you should take care of before or after. And this is why it is important to have context and learn more uh, about what you're actually doing, not just copy pasting. So um, I updated some, uh, some packages and you can see that he's asking me now to restart uh, some services. Services are uh, programs that run usually in the background that gives you uh, access to your printers or to other things. Like for example, right now, the SSH service is a program that runs in the background that accepts connections, which is mm. what I have done by connecting. And he is asking me to restart them. Is there a question? I'm sorry. All right, no questions. What we're doing now, we are now continuing after upgrading the packages. We're now going to see if there is a distribution upgrade. Uh, be careful with this command. So if you're running Ubuntu 18.04 and you do a dist upgrade, it might try to upgrade to 22.04. And these upgrades from one to the other are not always 100% supported. So, um, Please make sure to read carefully what you're doing, not to destroy your systems. So I'm doing it here because it's a new machine, but if you're using your own machine where you might have other services running, be really careful. So this is why you should not just copy paste um, commands from one uh, website to your servers. Of course, if it's just a new server like, like this, like I'm doing here, you could just copy paste. I mean, I usually try not to mess things up. Okay, let's give them an OK to restart services. Let's see if there are other upgrades that we are missing. Again, just to be sure, nothing, everything is fine. And now with apt-get auto-remove, we're now going to remove these packages. Okay, these are not being upgraded. Okay. Last thing, we reboot the machine so that we are sure that it will run with the latest kernels and the latest libraries. This is just because I love to have a system which is up to date. Updates are not only um, some lines of code that have been added, there are obviously also security updates which are necessary. And you're running a VPS, you're, in this case, I'm running a VPS. I have a, a contract with the provider where I take responsibility of what happens. And this should not be underestimated. All right, this is not something that should be taken lightheartedly. You're actually having a machine connected to the internet that is out there. Of course, the service provider might have some security in place already, but they usually just, do basic things for themselves to protect their own infrastructure mostly. And uh, given that you're responsible, you should actually take care of the security of your systems. And the least thing that you should do, so the minimum, is to keep it up to date. All right, after this, we are going to install some prerequisites. So these packages, apt transport HTTPS, uh, CA certificates, CURL, software properties common, uh, new PG, LSB releases. These are all packages that are required by the other packages from Docker to run. Uh, most of these packages are usually pre-installed. Uh, what he's installing right now is apt transport HTTPS, which was missing. All the others were actually already up to date. So CA certificate were already here, was already here, LSB releases, URL, G, new PG was already here. But uh, that's not always the case. It really depends on the image that the provider gives you and uh, makes available for his systems. What we're doing now, we're adding the Docker GPG key. Okay, Antonio, what are you saying? Um, right now, your operating system, Ubuntu, has a, uh, a list of 
uh, websites of servers where he can get packages. And Docker is not part of those standard lists. Uh, to be able to install Docker, you have now to um, get a key ring. So again, some keys, some um, cryptographic information, which um, makes sure that the packages that you're receiving can be verified. So right now we are getting from the docker.com website, Linux Ubuntu GPG, the keys, the public keys, and adding them to a keyring in my system so that afterwards when I'm going to install the packages, my system will be able to verify the uh, packages. Because Why is that, you might say? Well, the issue is always that um, there are malicious actors out there and Docker is a really important piece of cloud infrastructure. Uh, because as I said before, what Docker does, Docker gives it the opportunity to get every application packaged in a container. So imagine it really like a shipping container um, where everything is already pre-configured with the bare minimum. What's, what's the advantage? The advantage is that I can have a new Ubuntu machine, a Windows machine, I can have a Manjaro in Arc machine with different libraries, with different systems and um, having this big diversity in operating systems is a really big challenges for people which are building these applications because sometimes there are libraries that are not compatible. Maybe you have already your own uh, WordPress ins installation with your website which requires libraries so and so with version 5 and with my application you need version 6 and now you would have to update it and that might break your uh, other website system and so on and so forth. So there are a lot of uh, incompatibilities and issues and challenges with this diverse ecosystem of uh, operating systems. With Docker, you remove all these challenges. You just need the, the, the Docker system installed and you can download any kind of application out there, databases, websites, whatever. And the Docker container contains exactly what that application needs to run. And this is really advantages. And since this, uh, this system, this Docker is so widespread, there might be people out there that are um, um, publishing fake versions of the same package with some modifications so that they can break your system. And therefore, uh, it is required to uh, make sure that you have the original keys from Docker so that every time that you update or install the packages, you're actually, you can be able to verify that you're um, downloading and installing an original version or, or the correct version of the Docker. What I'm doing here now is adding the repository. So now I'm telling my system, my, uh, my package manager, which is apt, to add also the, uh, the website from Docker so that he can download uh, the packages from that website. Now I'm telling apt to update itself so that it also reads the packages from Docker. And now I'm going to install Docker uh, CE, which stands for Community Edition, uh, the CLI, the Docker Compose plugin, which makes it possible to read more complex files, and the Docker Compose itself. So this is what we are going through right now. As I said, it's going, it's doing it actually everything automatically, but this is the steps that we are actually following. So now we are setting up Docker in our system so that we will be able to run different containers. All right, now we are back at installing um, the Shimmer Beta. So as I said before, always be careful to have the latest link, which for us right now is beta 2.0.0 beta dash uh, dot three and again here if it's not visible extend the assets and get the link of this one so copy link to this and now we're going to go back here to get instructions first thing i'm going to create make dir dash p opt shimmer beta 
So dash p means if uh, I could also add more here. So this is uh, beta 003. It mean uh, with dash p opt exists. Shimmer beta does not. Beta dash uh, 003 does not exist. And so he will create them all these directories if they exist or not. Without dash p, it would not work. But right now, let's keep it shimmer beta. Let's change to that directory. And let's get the package with wget. So here we have the link that I copied, which is uh, Hornet 2.0.0 beta 3. Okay, perfect. Let's get it. All right. With ls, I'm checking the content of my directory, and I see here that I have the archive. With tar, we're now going to extract it. So xzf, name of the container. Uh, with tab, uh, I press H on my keyboard and the tabulator, the tab button, which is the one on the left hand uh, on the left side of Q. So it auto completes and makes it much easier to type. And now also the same with RM. RM means remove. And let's remove the archive. And now let's see again. Perfect. Now we have everything that we need to get started. What do we have here, actually? This is also a good question sometimes. So we have, of course, the readme file from the repository. We have the default configuration, which is config defaults.json. Let's have a look at that really shortly. Config underscore defaults.json. Here, this file contains the whole configuration and setup for the Hornet. So if you change something here, it changes the defaults. What has been done is, for example, here, there is the out appearing somewhere where here and as you can see the out appearing now is disabled what i could do i could go here in the defaults change it to true and enable there but what has been done is that you can actually have your config.json file with just the modification that you need as you can see here read only enabled the out appearing with that this also works all right, let's go back to ls.la. As you can see, there is no uh, .n file and there is no data folder, the, the directory, data directory. So again, going back to my instructions, the first thing we do now is to pull the containers. So Docker Compose, what is Docker Compose? Usually you can use Docker with uh, the command line. And you start a Docker container by doing different commands like Docker exec, uh, name of the container, or so on and so forth. Um, what we have here actually with Hornet is that we have a compose file which is putting um, together different containers and configurations at the same time. So right now Hornet is not only one container, which is the Hornet. 2.0 beta 3. Is this a question? No, it's not a question. Okay. So um, if I scroll down, we will see also the other containers. One is traffic, which is being pulled and installed and set up. Then we have Prometheus and Grafana, Prometheus to fetch the information and Grafana to display the information with um, with graphics and, and dashboards and whatnot and graphs. And then what we see here, we see the different INX extensions. So the indexer, the MQTT extension, the participation plugin, the spammer, the dashboard. So as you can see here, Hornet is more than just one container. And to make sure that all the containers talk together, have access to the information that they require and are set up correctly, you write a so-called Docker Compose file. And now what we're going to do here with Docker Compose pull is to tell him, hey, go through the Docker Compose file and check all the services and get all the containers that are there. So Hornet, Traffic, Prometheus, Grafana, INX, Indexer, MQTT, Participation, so on and so forth. This is what he's doing now. He's now getting all the containers 
from what they call the registry, which is the website where the containers are stored safely. I see here that I could now add here just really quickly while we are waiting. Oh, it's, it's so quick, already done, but just let me add this little formatting here. Uh, okay, too much. So, so, and so, so it looks a little better. Perfect. And now we create the env file, the environment file, which is a hidden file, which will contain the information that we need. Before we do so, we want and we need now the password, a password hash and a password salt to be able to use the Hornet dashboard. To do so, we get this command here, docker compose run. Um, it's going to run a, um, a Hornet tool, which is called password hash with some parameters, which is J JSON to get the JSON format. We give them the password and then we extract only the password and the password salt. So we change the password here. So please do not use your password goes here but use a really complicated, complex password because whoever has access to your dashboard can add and remove neighbors, can add and remove particip participation plugin information and therefore it should be really secure. So it should be at least not to, uh, not to play uh, some numbers and some special characters. Of course, avoid the quotes I just put in three exclamation marks and I'm going also to copy it because I'm going to forget it between now and later. So let me take note of this one in my paste bin before I forget it. So this is the new password. All right, let's get the salt and the hash. So this is the password hash, which I'm going to save here. And this is the salt, which I'm going to say. You can use a normal notepad or anything on your machine to keep track of this information. I'm just using that so that you can see it because uh, I set it up like this for this uh, for this information for this uh, setup today. All right, now I can do th two things. I can use my preferred e editor, which can be Vim. Uh, Emacs, 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 Nano, whatever. I don't judge, I, I use Nano. And you can just copy paste this part here from the document and start typing. So you start typing here your email and so on and so forth. Or you can use the echo commands. So before, during the quick installation i used the the template and now let me use the eco commands which is a little more complex but it shows you a little uh, differently how it works as you can see there is still no dot and env file so right now i'm going with the first one which is echo hornet host equals and now my host name i took note of my host name before which is in this case this one then let me check because you have to read carefully now uh, quotes we close them and then dot env with this um, symbol twice you're actually adding information if you use it once you're overwriting it so be careful here to always use this twice and as you can see now oh there is now a dot env file let's see the content oh Host, Hornet host, static, and so on and so forth. All right, let's continue. Echo, so what I'm typing, which is now going to be Acme email. Be careful with typos here. Tony at iota.org, which does not really exist as an email address, but again, it's just an experiment. In env, all right, let's check env. Oh, now I have both lines, Hornet host and Acme email echo dash board username be really careful here or games dot env echo dashboard password 
Here, again, be really careful not to use the password in plain text, but to use the hash of the password. Perfect. Is it the same? Yes, it is the same. Close the quotes. Dot env. All right, let's check if I'm writing everything. All looks good so far. Okay, now after the password, we go with the salt, right? Let me check if I, let me copy the salt right away. And let's check, yes, it's called dashboard, dashboard, salt. Typos are really dangerous, so be careful what you type, no? All right, now it looks like we have all the information, Hornet host, which is the host name, which again in production would be something like node.domain dot something. Um, in my case, it's the uh, static host name. Uh, Acme email is the email used for generating the SSL certificates and it is used to um, remind you if the certificates are expiring or something. The dashboard username is the username that you're going to have in your Hornet dashboard. The password is the hash of the password, so not the password itself, which we have generated beforehand with the password hash tool from Hornet. And the salt is the salt, which has also been generated with the same tool. It looks like we have everything here. Let me just clear the terminal to see a little bit more. And now we use the prepare Docker script. But hey, what is the prepare Docker script? Let's have a look. Well, he, um, it is a bash script, which does... Oh, look, if there is no .n file, it's going to show you the readme. Interesting. So it will not work if there is no n file. Um, it will support you in reading the fine manual. Otherwise, if there is an n file and you are not using um, a root account, it will ask you to run it at, as sudo. And everything, if everything is fine, so if there is an n file and if you're already root, it will start preparing the folders, which is data, data Grafana, Grafana Prometheus and data dashboard. As we might have learned with dash p, it creates the folder if it does not exist. So maybe the first line could actually be skipped. And here, last but not least, it is going to give um, permissions to user uh, 65532 and uh, group 65532 to the folder data and to the file peering JSON uh, to the folder data so that your user inside the Hornet container can actually write inside the data container and store uh, the, the Tangle, the database from the Tangle and all the other information like the peer-to-peer -peer store with your uh, keys, but also to the peering JSON. So if you use the dashboard to add or remove neighbors, it is uh, possible for the container, for the user inside the container to write in the file outside of the container. Now that we are understanding what the script is doing, Let's run it. And now we can see that we also have the data folder. Um, let me see data. Grafana, I should have, everything should be empty right now, but we're now just looking if he generated all the folders and it looks uh, the directories, the full the directories. Yes, the directories and it looks good. OK, we are as far as before. Auto peering is already enabled, so no need to check it. We can actually again run our node with docker compose up dash d. Docker compose is again the plugin for Docker, which will read our docker compose dot yaml yml file in the directory we move ourselves. Up means start all the containers, and dash d means run them as daemons in the background. I see Joe is typing. I hope there is a question. Any links to docs? Oh, uh, to, all right. This is my HackMD file I'm using so that you can follow it. This is the 
presentation I showed. Everything will be shared, of course, multiple times. No worries, no worries. Welcome back. It's got it's recorded, so I'm going to put it on on YouTube with the whole one hour and a half or two hours. I mean, we're almost done, so no worries. You can then look at it again and uh, follow it at your pace. Absolutely, my pleasure. This is why we are here. All right. All right. Now, um, these commands are not in the in the in the guide, but these are default default Docker commands. Look it up. Look them up. Uh, learn a bit, a little bit about Docker. So with PS, I'm showing all the uh, the services that are running. So Grafana, latest, um, Prometheus, INX participation, dashboard spammer, MQTT indexer, and here is my Hornet. So this is actually the most important um, container we are looking for. And now let's see with Docker logs Hornet. If it runs, uh, 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 I need the name, which is either Shimmer Beta, Shimmer Beta Hornet uh, typing is hard, underscore one, and I can see the log files of only that container. Okay, gossip closing, and I can already see that something is happening. So if there is no error here, if it looks good, let's see if I can also do what is it? Dash dash tail? I never remember. Uh, 200. It shows me the last 200 lines. Yeah, okay, perfect. So there are some specific commands that you can use. And let's also check the, um, the traffic container, which is, I prefer using the ID here. So Docker logs ID of the traffic container, boom. Uh, no, this was 24 hmm, some time ago. Let's see if now it found actually my domain. Three, two, one, go. Looks good. Wow, running, perfect. It is secured which with SSL, so we have a secure connection to the server, verified by a Let's Encrypt certificate. And again, um, traffic is taking care of generating and renewing your certificates, but also exposing the dashboard securely and safely. Traffic, that's my personal one, .io is the website. Uh, they have now different products. Traffic proxy is what we're using, which is completely open source, has its own dashboard. And I definitely suggest if you are exposing services to uh, to the Internet to have a look at how traffic works, because it's lightweight. It's uh, really a good way to configure it um, and it gives you a lot of control over the services that you're using. So besides the Hornet node, let's log in with War Games. If you do not know what War Games is, you are just telling me that you're really young or not really a nerd. And here's the password that I wrote before. Oh, War Games. Oh, are you telling me that I wrote the wrong password? Probably. I wrote down the wrong password. Me, 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 me. Okay, no access to the dashboard. Wrong password, no access. My bad. Um, I would now have to go back to the toolings, create, uh, regenerate the hash and assault and uh, do it again. But now this is not important. We saw it before that it works. This is what happens when you do it live. But additionally to this, and this is what DLT Green was telling us, the user DLT Green from DLT Green community, is that we can go to Grafana now. Grafana, slash Grafana, get access to Grafana. Here it's really important to do this 
right away. I didn't show it uh, during the quick start, but you're now actually exposing Grafana with the default password, which is admin admin. And you should definitely, definitely, definitely change it right away. I'm now going to use this standard password, which Firefox suggests because I'm going to kill the machine anyways. But also here, uh, make sure to use a secure and safe password. Thanks for the links, uh, Timson. Beautiful movie. Go watch it. All right. Now in Grafana, there is no dashboard configured. So how do we do this? How do we do this? I have a good colleague of mine, which is Dr. Electron, which some days ago shared the links to his dashboard configuration which I'm not going to share right now because I want him to tell me that it is all right to share it, but I'm just going to copy it and paste it in here so that we can see what I'm doing. Bam, bam. So I'm going to add, uh, import a dashboard by using a JSON file, which I copied from Dr. Electron's repository. Let me import it and boom. Here we have all the information about my Hornet node. As easy as that. So remember, after setting up your Hornet node, if you're using my manual installation, to uh, go into slash Grafana and change the administrator password right away to not expose it to anyone, to everyone like that. And after this, what you would actually do is at least set up the firewall. So let me see if uncomplicated firewall is already installed. Usually it is perfect. I'm going to allow out, outgoing all transactions. So all communication to the outside is open. I'm going to deny everything that comes in. So once I enable the rules that I'm setting, I will not be able to connect to the machine anymore unless we continue with the setup, which is allowing SSH, which is the secure shell which we're using to connect to the server, allowing port 80, which traffic is using to generate the certificates, allowing 443, which is the port used by SSL, which is the port that you connect to when you go over this lock here. So every website that you connect to with the lock, which with, uh, which is used usually or called HTTPS, is port 443 on every server. Um, if you have just HTTP without the S, it's the port 80. And we are allowing both of them. Um, then I'm just going to finish the firewall configuration. We allow the auto peering port, which is UDP 14626 and the gossip port, which is 15600. And after that, oh, I'm missing a command here. Uh, what is it? Enable. Yes. You have W enable and I finally enabled my firewall and all the ports are being locked or not depending on the rules that I set up right here. If you're changing the SSH um, port, um, be careful to set the correct port. Uh, otherwise you will lock yourself from the system. You have W enable all right what are all these numbers so this is uh it's on my very own camera uh camular all the information on the grafana i'm not going through everything everything but let's uh have a try so here bps dr electron now will now hit me on the fingers but i i imagine that that is uh oh blocks 
per second. MPS. Oh, the the info tooltip says MPS, which was messages per second, which was until Chrysalis, and now it is blocks per second. And now we have uh, last ten minutes where it were eleven point seven blocks per second, and right the last day it was ten blocks per second. Um, compacting pruning, as I said before, our node, our uh, Hornet node, can decide when to uh, compact the database and, and delete all the data. And it will show here when it's doing and what it's doing. These numbers here are the... Um, no worries, I will ignore MPS. Uh, these are the milestones that we are following from the coordinator. So this is the confirmed one, this is the latest one. This is the one that I set for pruning and uh, it's the last pruning uh, milestone and the last snapshot milestone. On top we here we have here how many neighbors we have. The size of my database which you can see right now is almost 12 megabytes. The RAM usage. I'm not sure how I should read this number. Um, the CPU usage, so how much uh, processing power you're using. If this is always at 100, you might want to change your machine. If it's synchronized, if it's healthy, what version we're running, uh, how many blocks per second we're receiving, the requests per second that we're sending and receiving. Here we have heartbeats per peer, so every Hornet node talks to each other with a heartbeat and tells them I'm here, I'm here, I'm here. And this is the heartbeats that we received based on the uh, neighbor we are connected and here is the heartbeats that we are sending. I'm just going by by feeling here. Here for every peer, for every neighbor we are connected, it's showing how many blocks we're receiving. Here we have some information about storage, how much the cache uh, is using, how big the database is, uh, the migrator, okay this is going too far i don't know, know what the receipts are and then we have additional metrics like messages to request if we are behind uh if we, if we are syncing and such and how many are have been handled and of course you can do more uh, and not everything has to be uh, monitored that uh, deeply but it's absolutely important to have all this information at hand to for example uh, verify if your machine is performant enough. All right, going back to our guides, um, I'd say that this is now the bare minimum to have your uh, your Hornet running and to experiment with it. Uh, you can now use this static uh, domain here. Uh, again, I would suggest to own or have your own domain. Um, to actually connect and run your node in production and then you could use this uh, address to connect with your client libraries for example and do other stuff and then you should of course harden your systems please never underestimate um, never underestimate security of your systems so uh, from here it's all a, um, a a learning curve to understand what it means to harden your systems but right now we have really the minimum minimal setup um, in the guide or in the installation steps as I said before I am keeping track also of the information about how to use the your ledger nano and one at least one link you know one link uh, let's see if it's still working yes 40 40 hardening uh, security tips for 2021 so this is now up to you to uh, f go forward and learn more about hardening um, again I cannot cover everything as you can imagine as it would be really a lot all right here we have the uh, firewall setup as I said before so what's next well of course welcome node operators you are now part of the beta shimmer beta tangle which is awesome which is great enjoy it try to experiment with it um, get your uh, libraries out and start building uh, 
go to the wiki uh, and learn more about Shimmer, the, no the node infrastructure. Oh, the link, of course, uh, also has to be added correctly and start experimenting. Uh, make sure to now, if you're running the node, also go to get your badges and get your Shimmer Hornet node operator badge by clicking on the sparkles at the end so that you can be um, pinged uh, if there are any kind of updates uh, from us. So um, for the ones that are trying this and uh, looking at the recording on YouTube and you now tried it out and you do not have time right now and want to save some money and you are using the same uh, VPS provider that I did, uh, remember to go back to the provider website and delete the VPS to save some money. All right. Um, here I also have the guides how to do so. Go, go to your project, choose your machine on the three dots, delete, copy paste the name and delete the server to save the money. And you can now go to your account on the invoices and verify the usage if I remember it correctly. What now for everyone listening in uh, and not live uh, on Discord, join the IOTA Discord, the IOTA Shimmer Discord, and of course, afterwards, learn more about VPS security. I hope you enjoyed the time with us together today. I enjoy it really thanks everyone in the general voice channel and in the general voice chat it was a really a real pleasure uh, spending the time with you it's now almost two hours <laughs> so thanks to everyone uh, thank it was really really enjoyable and this was the beta uh, party next time i want you to be ready for the mainnet party where we are going to do uh, really a lot more fun, of course. So the setup will be a really quick setup in five minutes to upgrade our nodes and then um, enjoy uh, with some uh, drinks, hopefully. Um, I'm planning to try the node on my own network. Which port needs to be exposed to the internet to have a system running? I already have a web server running and ready forwarded, for example. Um, Figuratum, uh, the ports are 14, 6 to 6, 15, 600. If you already have your own web server running on Adeon 443, um, you should set up your web server to forward or to expose uh, the Hornet dashboard. How to do that is up to you. If it's Apache, Nginx or another one, you have to look at their configuration, how to forward a request uh, for example, to uh, the dashboard uh, port, which is 8081, if I remember correctly, and the API port, which should be 14265. Um, that should be uh, actually everything. Yes, please. Um, yeah, does it need to be connected to the internet, the dashboard, or can I just uh, check it locally? Oh, of course you can check it locally. So... Uh, uh, I'm sure that need, there are ports that need to be connected in order to make a connection with the, uh, the net. Um, but I, I think the dashboard doesn't need to be, does it? The dashboard does not need to be, of course not. Uh, you would... As I only want to um, approach it lo uh, locally. Yes, uh, let me verify the configuration. So nano config, let me verify the defaults if it's exposing them because of course exposing them through traffic uh hornet is configured as such that it does not expose the ports to the uh, to uh, the ip address so for example 15600 will be exposed to any ip so as long as you expose it through the router you will be able to access it but for example the dashboard oh which is now its own inx plugin probably uh, so this is the validator, uh, INX, oh, let me check, uh, dashboard, 
Yeah, the dashboard is not here anymore. Dr. Electron, where is now the dashboard configuration? Because back in the day, it was in the config defaults. And now we have... It should be in the Docker Compose config. In the Docker Compose config, thank you. So now no. Yeah. Docker Compose, I love it. So now in the INX plugin for the dashboard, which is here. Uh, it's going through, uh, it's going through traffic. So you would need actually here to add something like this to have ports. Yeah, actually there's an INX plugin and down below and that should have that there. Yeah. So oh. it's it's all internal and it's traffic that's exposing and, and routing the port 80 to the dashboard. So exactly. you can, if you don't want the dashboard running, you can simply just not run the INX um, dashboard uh, plugin and it won't, I mean, th that will shut it down altogether. If you want to look at it locally, then you're just going to have to do something um, like this. Have to say expose that port locally 881 yeah, exactly and delete this and delete the whole traffic thing and it should be possible um no then you also need the network also yeah just you can restart the inx dashboard and it'll re restart that but you also need the public network because if you are not on the public network, it will not work, which is not defined. It's using the default network, I think. All right, so it's using the default network. All right, then there is no need, probably. So again, you delete all the traffic stuff here. You add ports 8081, 8081, and you can access then uh, by using the local IP address, the, IP address of the machine and then 8081. But again, this is not uh, suggested for production environments or externally. No, I really should look into uh, traffic. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, traffic is really nice. Traffic is really nice to do stuff like this. Also because it keeps, um, you know, it's, it's a filter between uh, the external uh, or let's say the, the, the internet and the, and the dashboard, even if you're using it internally. Uh, it, I understand it. You can, also, make sense. you can also add a filter and only allow certain IP addresses on traffic too. So if you just add a filter in there and say, oh, okay, only allow people from this IP address or this subnet, you can also uh, have traffic do it that way. I believe. Exactly. Uh, so you mean for my situation? For your situation, it's a little bit more complicated because we would need to know exactly your architecture. Uh, and uh, you, okay, would, you. you would have to put actually traffic in front of your actual web server and redo everything. So uh, yeah. for now, I'd say with an Docker Compose, you should be able to expose the dashboard uh, locally, at least. Yeah. Really nice. Thank you very much. Yeah, absolutely. My pleasure. So I think we can wrap it up for today. So again, I really appreciate everyone joining today. It was a real pleasure in my dark office here. I have to put some lights if I want to become a real good influencer. Um, so enjoy your time. The recording will be uploaded right after. And it is always really nice to be with you together. And if there's anything, join the Hornet uh, channel and um, get in touch with the community members and let's get Shimmer started. Bye everyone. It was a pleasure. Bye bye. <laughs>